Number three then from the 2000 advanced tyre, complex roots of a polynomial. What does it say? Show that this is a root and obtain the remaining roots. Now, there's all sorts of ways you could go through this. If the question had just said, here is a root, and that's taken as given, here is a root, find the other roots, you could do that very quickly. If that's a root, then its conjugate is also a root. And then rather than saying, well, if those are roots, you could reconstruct the irreducible quadratic that had those as roots. And then if you wished, divide that quadratic into that and so on, you could simply say this. Well, here's two of the roots. There's one left because it's power three. But because it's power three, because it's an odd power, there must be one real root. A the graph of a cubic would look like this. It must cut the axis once. Those other two intersections don't need to be there. That's why they're complex in this case. But it must cut it once. And if that, but just if, if that happens to be a nice integral cut, you could find that just by synthetic division without that whole rigmarole of trying to form that quadratic and dividing it in, if that's what you care to do. You could simply say this. What are the coefficients using synthetic division? I've got one. There's no x, there's no z squares. Zero, negative eight, 108. Now, 108 has got lots of factors in it. But I can see that the difference here in terms of the magnitude, that's about six times it. And six is one of the factors of this. So I'll try six. I've got one up to six, down to six, up to 36. 18, but that would give me a positive, so I'll try the negative 6. 1, negative 6, 6. Still back to 36. Still give me 18, but now it's going to be negative 108. So that was the answer. So the third root was negative 6, if that's all it asked. But it didn't. So, show that that's a root. Now, you shouldn't really beg the question by assuming it's a root and taking its conjugate and reconstructing the quadratic, then dividing the quadratic in to show that that quadratic's a factor, and then retrace your steps saying, well, if that quadratic is a factor, then its two individual parts are factors, and if this part is a factor, then that is a root. No, if it says show that's a root, then strictly speaking, what it means is show that that is a solution to this equation. Show that if you put z equal to this, the answer comes to zero. So the first part would be make z equal to that. There's not an awful lot there. You could do it in two parts. You could take the common factor of z out, just forget the 108, but I'll probably just work this part. I'll just put it in. So I've got 3 plus 3i to the power 3 minus 18 times 3 plus 3i plus 108. It doesn't take too long to do that part because you've got a binomial to the power 3. That's 1, 3, 3, 1. So what I'm going to have is 1 times 3 cubed and then the other part will just be a 1 plus 3 times 3 squared and then it'll be times the 3i plus 3 times 3 and then it'll be the 3i squared and then finally plus 1 times just the 3i cubed minus 54 minus 54i plus 108. That's a bit squinty. So what have you got then? You've got 3 cubed, 27. Here we've got 4 for a power of 3, so that's 81. So that's plus 81i. Here again, there's 3 to the power of 4, so it's an 81. But an i squared will make it minus, minus 81. Here we're down to 27, but an i cubed would be minus i, so minus 27i. Minus 54, minus 54, 5, 54i plus 108. So altogether you've got 135, take away 35, 0. And you've got 54, 81, away from 81, which is 0. Which means that z equals 3 plus 3i is a root. I know that took an awful lot of working, but strictly speaking, I think that was the intention. Show it's a root by showing it solves the equation, rather than assuming it's a root and going through all of the division. Next part would be this. Now that you know that's a root, I can make the rest of the statements. I'll call that one now. If that's a root, then its complex conjugate is also a root. And now I can reconstruct the factor, the irreducible factor. Now, I'm not going to go through that tedious rigmarole of saying, well, if that's a root, then z minus it. 
is a factor, and if that's a root, then z minus it is a factor, and then go through all these different multiplications of the three terms in this bracket times the three terms in that bracket, and tidying them all up. There's a simpler way to do that if you know the roots of a quadratic, which is this. I'll just put this down this way. If alpha and beta are roots of a quadratic, then the quadratic must look like x minus alpha, x minus beta. Multiplying that out gives you x squared minus alpha minus beta, that's minus alpha plus beta, plus alpha beta. For your quadratic, must be x out there. That's something you used to do in the higher that seems to have disappeared for some reason. If you know the roots of a quadratic, it's easy to reconstruct the quadratic without having to go through that particular multiplication. And in the case of complex numbers, that's particularly easy because of the conjugate nature of these. Look, alpha plus beta. If those are the roots, the coefficient of x will be the sum of the roots. But because the complex conjugate has got opposite signs for the imaginary part, that simply means that alpha plus beta would be the sum of the real parts, which is just double that number. Alpha beta, again, is particularly easy in the case of complex conjugates, because alpha times beta means 3 plus 3i times 3 minus 3i, which is the product of the difference of two squares. So it will just simply be the first one squared, take away the second one squared, but there's an i squared in that, so that's actually the factorization for the sum of two squares. And the sum of the squares would simply be these two numbers squared and added. So that's what I'll do here then. I'll use this pattern. So I'll say if that's a root, then that's a root. That means that z squared minus the sum of the roots, 3 and 3 is 6, plus the product of the roots, which will be the sum of the squares, 3 squared and 3 squared, 9 and 9 is 18, is a quadratic factor. That's all there is to it. That sort of makes up for this big piece of arithmetical palaver you had to go through here just to show that that was a root. And another thing is, to find the remaining factor, which must be linear, because I've already got a square term and it's only cubed, you don't need to go through an algebraic division. Do it if you wish, if you want to use up some more time. Because if there's only a linear factor to find, you can state it straight away. So we can now say this. Here's my expression. z cubed minus 18z plus 108 equals 0. Means that I've got z squared minus 6z plus 18. And I can reconstruct this factor quite simply just by using what the products would have been. The first times the first must give the first. So if that's z squared, this linear factor must start z. The last times the last must give the last. And if that says 18, and that's 108, that's 6 times it, so that must be plus 6. There's no more or any less to it than simply that. If you know a quadratic factor, it's trivial to find the remaining linear factor to produce a cubic expression. Which means that the final roots are going to be, I've got z equals negative 6, z equals, I had it up there already, 3 plus 3i, and z equals 3 minus 3i. There we go. That wasn't too bad, apart from this little bit here. That was a bit annoying. <laughs>